Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, good afternoon everybody. I hope you guys are um, and, um, have had your vaccination. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, um, welcome back to UM. Uh, even though for now we are, for the first two weeks, I'm sure you guys know, uh, we will be doing all lectures and all other activities including your um, lab activities as an online. Okay, first two weeks and then on the third week, um, it depends. Um, depends on your lecture, depends on your, um, on, on the current scenario. We might do physical, we might do still online until the end of the semester. Okay, so um, before we start with the lecture, um, I hope that you guys have downloaded um, Poll F, Poll Everywhere. Okay, so um, what... I'm planning to do, uh, I've already tested this application and whatnot with your seniors last year, or last semester, last semester, not last year, last semester, and um, I got a very good feedback on it. So um, I'm reiterating, reusing the technology. Of course, it's a different um, course altogether, but um, the feedback is very good. Your seniors liked it very much, especially because, you know, when you are doing a normal lecture online like this, normally... The lecturer will be the one who will be doing all the talking, okay? But um, if you download this, um, and since our class is very small, I want everyone to download it, okay? Just download on your uh, mobile, or you can just use your browser. You can just open another tab um, and go to poll, uh, pollf.com forward slash hadi 49 okay? We will see after this, and um, what you will see is basically what I'll be doing um, are lectures. Uh, I hope that you guys can hear me, right? Um, uh, basically, lectures with embedded tutorial. So, I will not have a separate tutorial class, okay? I will be just doing everything as an embedded lecture. So, um, mentioned in the what at the um, lectures, uh, all the lecture notes will be compiled as one lecture note and I will be, I will be posting it on Spectrum um, by this week, okay? Uh, it's almost finished. I just need to add in and remove some things, then I will post it back um, on Spectrum. So, but for today's lecture, it should already be on Spectrum. If you did not manage to download it, uh, I've already shared it with you guys this morning. All right. Um, so, welcome to SID3020, Natural Products and Biotechnological Processes. I'll be handling on this subject, per se, okay, Biotechnological Processes, and um, Prof. Kali Jawang will be um, looking um, after the natural products um, on the chemistries, on examples, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, for those who already know me, um, my name is uh, Abdullah Al Hadi Amafuad, but I prefer people to call me just Hadi. Okay, that's my email address in case if you need to email me. You can either use Spectrum or you can just email me straight away. Um, I'm good either way. Okay, and um, that is not today's attendance. That one is a QR code for my website. So if you are interested or if you are planning to do any FIP or whatever projects in the future, um, you can just go to my website. I frequently update it, update it with um, what I'm doing um, in, this, in terms of uh, research. All right. So, um, okay. So that's my name. That's my office. It's located at level three, three, um, Bangunan Amal Kimia. Okay, the, the building at the very back. Um, I'm sure everybody knows because you guys went to, I hope that everybody went to BMK before the uh, first MCO started. Um, I know Habinesh and few of you guys here um, did went to BMK, but I'm not sure the other to BMK or not. Just a little bit about, but about my background. Um, I did a uh, Bachelor of Biotechnology in Chemistry in Australia back in 2020, uh, 2010. Okay, so that's why I'm teaching you guys about biotechnology. Um, and I did my PhD in Medicinal Chemistry, so my research resolved around drug design and whatnot. Okay, um, again, if you're looking for projects um, or information about what I've been doing, you can just scan that QR code, uh, go to my website and um, find your information there you can perhaps find the old lecture notes um, for this particular subject that is here. Okay, if you want to you know, go and do something advanced, you can always go to that 
uh, website and all the videos about the uh, subject recordings are available there as well. Okay, so that's just my picture. I went to Harvard back in 2018 to 2019. Uh, worked with this group of uh, amazing people. Um, that one is Prof. Uh, Joseph Brain, or we call him Joe Brain. And that one is uh, Dr. Ramon. And these two are medical students. That one is uh, Tom, he's um, kind of like the lab assistant. Um, and this one is the uh, PA for Joe, and that's me over there having fun like you guys did when you did your lab, right, Heavy Nash? <laughs> okay, so uh, a little bit about lecture information. Um, all lecture Mondays, um, all Mondays lecture for the next uh, 14 weeks of the semester will be with me. And on all Wednesday lectures will be with uh, Prof Khalija. So what you'll be doing is kind of like switching between um, the biotechnological and natural products and biotechnological and natural products. Um, why did we do everything in first seven semester? It's because on Wednesday, I have my lab. So I need to attend the lab. And uh, fortunate enough, Prof Khalija is free um, on Wednesday. So we switch. So I'll be taking all Monday's lectures and she'll be taking all Wednesday's lectures. Okay, so I hope it's fine with you guys. Um, you need to a little bit doing a bit, a bit for our current scenario. Now, um, as I mentioned previously, uh, I do not plan for any specific tutorial classes. Okay, for now, I don't have any plans for that. But what I'll be doing is um, I'll be including live tutorial as, as part of um, the lectures. Okay, so but for today, uh, I didn't prepare anything related to the lecture. But um, I hope that you can at least get accustomed to how the live tutorial will be handled um, today, soon. Okay, so if you have not downloaded this app, you can just go um, to your Apple everywhere, um, download the app. It's, it's free to download, it's free to use. You don't have to register. Okay, you can just uh, join in, participate as um, anonymous. Okay, um, and um, if say, your mobile phone, you, you are using your mobile phone for something else or for your uh, siblings or whatnot, you can always go to, um, I think you can just search on Google, pull everywhere, you can join in, participate um, via the online platform. Okay, so attendance link, QR code on that one. Um, otherwise, you know, because this one is, uh, I'm, I'm actually recording this lecture, so I'll post it again on Spectrum, so you can just QR scan this one um, if you missed it. Okay. All right. So, um, so your your friend is here actually. So all lectures for now. Okay. I plan it to have it as an online asynchronous, but um, in case if you guys are already in UM or you you live somewhere around uh, KL and you want to do it as a hybrid, we can do that. Okay. Because our class is very small. Okay, we only have 18 of you and um, our lecture hall can go up to, if I'm not mistaken, about 30. So there's no issue if you want to do um, a physical class. And um, if you do want to do that, then, um, um, Kairunisa, was it? I think um, I will do a hybrid class whereby um, we will still meet um, and, and do all the lectures online, but then, um, I think it's Nisa, I can't remember who. Uh, so the other one will just join as an online, okay? Something like this, but we will have everyone um, in front of me. Okay, uh, in terms of cost assessment, you will have two quizzes. First quiz will be on week seven, second quiz on week 14. So these are the dates for your lectures. Um, put it in, save in your calendar, okay? Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any uh, public holidays falls on Monday. Um, there might be um, some public holiday falls on Saturday, but I'm not sure whether the Monday will be a holiday or not. But if there's no holiday, so far when I've checked, there's no holiday. So um, we'll have our lectures throughout the 14 weeks. So um, we shouldn't have any issues in the sense that I need to kind of like go very fast um, to make sure that I'll finish, finish all the um, things that you need to know. Okay. And finally, we will have our summative assessment as a final exam. Um, so 
this is to accommodate um, some feedbacks from you guys or from, from your seniors and juniors that says that they prefer to have a final exam as a final exam instead of alternative assessment. So uh, because this subject is not a core course, so we will just be doing a final exam. Okay. All right. So learning outcome for these lectures, there's four. Okay. But um, related to the topics that I'll be covering, it's just two. One is classify natural products according to structure and metabolic pathway. So it's more on the metabolic pathway and natural products. Primarily, if you see me, then it will be about enzymes, um, enzymes, protein, and whatnot. Okay. And second one is the use of um, biotechnological methods in chemistry. So as you will see later on, biotechnology is a very, very huge field. So we'll be just focusing on a small bit of it, which is related to you guys as a chemist. Okay. So basically what you, the outcome from the uh, 12 weeks of lectures, I'm hoping that you guys can understand what biotechnology is all about, um, some importance, differences between chemical biotechnology chem uh, and a pure chemical, pure chemistry. Okay. And um, I, I don't know, maybe some of you guys will work in a pharmaceutical um, industry. So learning a little bit about biotechnology will be um, an advantage for you. Okay, so we'll be doing a, a quick survey uh, everywhere, okay, that, that app. So if you just open your poll everywhere um, now and then key in ID for art 049, okay, so you can participate in the survey. Okay, so uh, open your app or, or website, uh, just Google. Um, I don't think I can show you guys how to do it. I and mean, you guys are big enough. I'm sure you guys can, you know how to do it very quickly. Okay. So, um, this is where you go. If you are on a web browser, just go to poolf.com forward slash hadi for art zero. Okay. So we'll be using all the same code for everything. So if you just join in now, you will not see anything yet because I need to, um, start off the quiz. Okay, oh, it's already there. I've already uh, activated it. So, learning environment. I didn't want oh, that one first. This one first. Okay. Learning devices, laptops, and whatnot. Um, so, again, this question is anonymous. Um, just let me know what are your learning devices. If you in laptop, then write down laptop. If you're using iPad and iPad, a phone and a phone. Okay. Um, okay, so this is how it will be conducted um, as part of the online um, tutorial. Okay, so instead of having face, I will I will post a question um, related to the topic, and you need to give out your answer. So it could be something like this. So this one is a cloud um, cloud word cloud style. Um, I can do a lot of other styles, uh, ABC, multiple choice, fill in the blank, so forth. So those are the styles that I'll be doing. Okay. So from here, um, we can actually see most of you guys are using laptop. Okay. Um, which is fine because I'm not using, I'm not doing anything fancy. Um, it's just that if you are using, um, smartphone, um, there are certain things that will be covered in this lecture that will be a little bit. Not, not to this lecture, of course, but the following um, uh, some, uh, weeks, okay, that are a little bit um, difficult for you to navigate if you are using um, uh, just a mobile device. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. You can do it, but it's a bit difficult. Okay, so that's the first one. Thank you for uh, participating. Let's go to the second one. So if you are at home or if you are at, at college or wherever you are, okay, How's your learning environment? Is it good? Is it sufficient? Do you have, um, I think internet access is a bit, um, it's a different story. Okay. Um, whether it's sufficient, it's quiet enough for you to learn or, you know, you might have some difficulties. So, well, that's, that's a, a sad face. Why sad face? Okay. So this information, um, 
I will use some of it at least um, when we have our department meeting so I can talk to all the other cliques um, that some students has a bit difficulty in terms of internet and so on and so forth. So perhaps we should go into a, a physical mode instead. Yeah, as long as there's um, social distancing, of course. Gonna rent home, duduk rumah, house moderate. Okay, so um, I hope everybody is okay. All right, so most of you guys are at home. Okay. I hope that you have fun, right? Like this. So you will see it's more fun when uh, when it's a, 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 a full-fledged question. This one is like a very general ones. Um, you will see it's more fun to see uh, some people get it wrong. <laughs> some people get it right. Okay. All right. So uh, and if you were to do it 100% um, online throughout the semester, will you have any issues with your internet access? Simple yes or no is suffice. You should have. Fairly me. In college or in them, right? So you're actually at home. Okay. Fun and changing and so I hope that you, you like this, this kind of style. Um, perhaps I can promote um using this kind of style with um some of my colleagues okay you need wi-fi okay you need wi-fi i, I understand you wi-fi sometimes okay sometimes start <laughs> okay all right so um final one do you want to have a face-to-face -face lecture in a lecture hall or do you prefer, um, you know, having just online throughout? It's fine either or because uh, if you want to meet, and as I mentioned, we will do a hybrid class where if you want to join in as online, then you can join us online. If you want to um, come into the lecture hall, you can, especially if you're already in college or if, you're, if you live um, very near to UM. Done. Okay. Oh, this is a tough one. Those who choose maybe, you need to choose yes or no. <laughs> Just to help. Okay. Alright, so one is maybe. Um, then perhaps if there's only half of you guys, so 10 of you, if you want to come to UM, um, I guess we can do that. Uh, of course, we will talk still about this um, in WhatsApp so that the discussion will be more um, two ways. So this one is just a quick survey. Okay. All right. So um, thank you everyone for the quick survey. So I will use this um, info um, as a proof that students do want to see, uh, to meet face to face instead of just having And, um, okay, so yes, let's move to our current topic. So what we'll be talking about is um, I've separated this, our 12 lectures into three sections or three topics. So the first topic is what is biotechnology. Um, I'm actually planning to cover it just for today, but unfortunately, because I, I mumbled too much and because of introdu introducing the poll app with you guys, so I'm not sure that I can finish everything uh, within one week. Otherwise, I will just cover um, this first one today and then a little bit uh, on week number two. Okay. And then we'll move forward to um, enzymes, uh, classification and selectivity uh, next week as well. Okay. So I will just post everything so that you can, if you want to print your lecture notes, you can just print everything. Uh, if you don't want to print it, it's fine. You can just keep a copy. Okay. Right, so basically, there are three topics. What is biotechnology? Um, we're looking into uh, enzymes, or I like to classify as in vitro technology. So in vitro meaning that something that you do outside of uh, a human body, not, not just human, an organism body, except for microbes. Okay, so this one is the general terms. If you are using um, uh, cellular 
or biotechnology whereby you are using uh, organism, then normally you will say as in in vivo. Okay, in vitro is a term that you use in a petri dish normally. Okay, so if you are doing an experiment in say a rat or a human in your own body, then you normally call it as in vivo. Something that you do outside on a petri dish, you normally call it as in vitro. Um, the terminology doesn't really matter. Um, for you guys, it's just for me to introduce to you guys what are some of the terminologies that you use in biotechnology um, so that in the future, um, if you heard about it, you will not be puzzled and say, oh, what is that? I don't know. Okay. Right. Um, so we'll just go through this as we go. I'm not going to go into very deep uh, on that one. Okay. So what is biotechnology? So these are some examples of biotechnology. So you can actually grow a human ear on mice. You can do Dolly the sheep. If you have heard about this before, this one is a clone sheep. Okay. So meaning that there is an identical animal, like genetically identical uh, and physically identical. Normally when you have a genetic um, identical to something like twins, for example, twins, they are genetically identical. Um, however, a, a normal twin, Compared to Dolly the sheep, okay, a normal twin might have slight variation due to um, uh, physical exposure, okay. So say for example, if you have a, a, a twin brother um, and you are the active one, so you like to jog a lot, you like to do sports, but your twin brother doesn't like to do that. He likes just to eat and sleep. So of course, uh, physically you will be very fit while your twin brother will be very fat, okay. So um, that's why... Twins, uh, even though they are genetically identical, there can be differences. But Dolly the sheep, because it's a sheep that is grown in the lab, um, so the, the, the sheep doesn't really encounter any external stimuli that are totally different. So um, Dolly the sheep is the um, genetic identical, the first clone living animal sheep. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, a sheep lifespan can go between 10 to 15 years. Um, the clone sheep, um, sheep, um, if I'm not mistaken, the age was like about five years old and then it died for um, whatever reason. Okay. Yes, you can actually grow uh, meat in the lab. Okay, so these are something that uh, people are looking to. And of course, if you just simply Google, there are other amazing technologies, for example, um, you know, when you buy stuff, sometimes you have polystyrene, the white thingy, right? So, um, uh, a company in the Canada and US are developing a mushroom. So, using mushroom to actually substitute um, all this polystyrene because um, the mushroom base is safer um, and is biodegradable compared to a polystyrene. So, biotechnology can be used in multiple ways and you will see one example um, of use of the best use of biotechnology. Um, oh God. In the next few slides. Okay. All right. So definition, what is a biotechnology? So biotechnology is the exploitation of a biological process uh, for industrial and other purposes, especially the genetic manipulation of microorganism for the production of antibiotics, hormone, etc., uh, which we call it as by, uh, bio products. Okay, so this is definition by Oxford Dictionary. I have no idea why my iPad is laggy, so that's why it's a bit laggy when you guys see it as well. Okay, so this is just um, a, a raw definition based on dictionary. So uh, my definition of biotechnology is utilizing biotechnological entities, example enzymes, microorganism, cells, or whatever we call it as a living. Okay, so or, or non living, you, you can because it says um, microorganism. Okay, so it involves virus as well. Okay, so virus is a non living um, organism. So um, we consider that as part of biotechnology. If you are using virus uh, for a, a reason, okay, so you can consider you can group that as biotechnology. And of course, the critical thing about this definition is for industrial application. If you just use it for 
um, you know, your your own personal life, then you don't consider that as um, biotechnology. Okay, yeah, you can, but other people might not consider it as biotechnology. Okay, so in other words, um, using biological resources for biosynthetic processes, um, chemistry application. Okay. Um, because you guys are chemists and um, there's no reason for me to teach you biology. So what we'll be focusing on are primarily biocatalysts, bioreactor, uh, and, and how you actually do this from, uh, not really in very detail, but from A to Z by jumping a few alphabets. Okay, so just a rough idea on what um, you can do as a bio, uh, as a chemist uh, in terms of using biotechnology. Okay. All right. So, um, biotechnology has been used in in our daily life. You might have not noticed about it. Um, if you like tomatoes, for example, tomatoes are part of uh, biotechnology. Okay, they are using, even though it's a subset of, uh, not a very modern biotechnology, is a classical biotechnology. But nonetheless, um, they falls into um, this similar category. Okay. Um, oh wait. Okay, so what I mean by natural products here are not the natural products that you just simply extract from plants. Okay, so natural products here means that uh, uh, the process uh, or materials um, that you can get from a biotechnological um, organism. Okay. For example, if uh, if you're talking to um, Dr. Chu, for example, or uh, Dr. Low Yun Yi, uh, those researchers, they are normally talks about um, natural products, natural products, as in the, the chemical products uh, that you can extract from uh, a natural plants. Okay, But over here, the natural products that I mean is that, um, say for example, if you can produce uh, ascorbic acid synthetically, Okay, so that one will be classified as a synthetic product, not a natural product. However, if you can use biotechnology to produce, um, say, you know, if you're asking um, a rose flower to produce uh, a high quantity of ascorbic acid, and then you extract the ascorbic acid from the flower, then the ascorbic acid that you get is a natural product. In, co in comparison, if you synthetically synthesize it in the lab, you consider it as a chemical product. So it's a matter of definition, even though both can be exactly the same, can be exactly identical, but depending on the process, not the material, okay, uh, the definition can change. Okay, So that's, that's what I mean by um, natural products over here. And therefore, in terms of biotechnology, you normally look for the process and not the material. Okay, so... Um, of course, it depends. Um, it, not always um, like that, but uh, in general speaking, this is um, how you can utilize biotechnology. Okay, and and of course, um, there are various applications um, that we will see in the next uh, slide. But one of the uh, most used uh, biotechnological processes or technology um, in the past two years is PCR. So. PCR, we will learn in a bit more detail, but this is one example of uh, a biotechnology that we use uh, in our daily life, especially in the, in the past two years where when COVID um, hits all the countries in the world, everybody's using QT-PCR. If you heard about swap tests, for example, so swap test um, is a collection technique. You collect the virus and then you do a QT-PCR, if you heard about it. Or if you read it somewhere, QT PCR. So what what this means is a qualitative polymerase chain reaction. Okay. So normally we just call it just QPCR, but um, somehow nowadays they call it as QT PCR. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Okay. So the PCR machine is the one on the most left. So it's a very simple machine. Um, and UM, of course, as part of um, a research university, we do have a lot of PCR and our PCR are actually being used as part uh, to, to help the country um, to do sample analysis. Okay, we will look at PCR in more detail in the next few uh, weeks. Uh -oh. I 
cannot switch my slide. Sorry ya, kejap. Yeah, come on. I don't want to switch. Okay. I have to close this. Sorry guys, some technology issues there. Alright, I hope it's working again. Oh, now it's too much. Okay, okay this happened because the file is very big. Um, because I combined all the lectures uh, into one file. Okay. Alright, now we are back. Now, um, why is biotechnology important? Um, it's important because of these three things. So these are the main three things. It doesn't mean that it's always like this. Uh, there are other examples that I can use, but these are the major three things that I want to highlight um, in our lecture. If you are interested in to find like what are more advantages of using biotechnology. Of course, in chemistry itself, we do have, uh, we, we can actually now produce uh, ethanol, from um, algae so that one is also part of biotechnology but it's not listed here um, i will just group it under materials okay now so uh, i classify the importance of biotechnology into three things so the first one is food a uh, good example of food is if you talk about pizza hut okay so because everybody loves pizza um you can actually change okay so everybody loves Pizza and uh, everybody knows Pizza Hut. Okay, and what do you have in Pizza Hut? What are the organisms that you use? I hope, well, if it's in a real class, then of course I will just keep quiet until you guys give me an answer. But because uh, I just want to, um, you know, catch up with all the times lost due to um, the poll F, then I will just give you guys the answer. Y E A S T. Okay, so in Pizza, you use yeast. Okay, um, so uh, this is part of a biotechnology in food processes. You can use yeast for uh, bread making, for example, not just about pizza, of course. Uh, bread making, everybody's using um, yeast. If you are lactose intolerant, uh, you use lactase. Okay, if you are lactose intolerant, like me, okay, uh, what does it mean, lactose intolerant? Meaning that if you drink milk, then you get a diarrhea. Okay, so this is lactose intolerant. So, uh, in order for me to reduce the severity of uh, my diarrhea due to drinking milk, so I need to eat a pill of lactase. So, lactase is an enzyme. Okay, so this is an enzyme that helps to break down lactose. So, lactose, when you uh, read about milk, okay, so you probably know that there's a lot of lactose in milk. It's part of major constituent of milk. So, uh, it breaks down into... Um, glue and glucose and galactose okay so it breaks it down so that uh, my body can actually absorb it so you will not get uh, a side effect of um, uh, a lactose intolerant so these are um, two examples of uh, food in biotechnology of course there are uh, many other examples uh, for example for those who actually drink uh, alcoholic beverages so um, you use either yeast or you use a different organism to actually produce this. Um, and I know not because I drink it, it's because I learned in Australia and Australia has a very, very huge wine industry. So I actually learned a lot about technology in terms of wine making and so on and so forth. Okay, so moving on, um, in terms of materials, so what can you use for uh, in terms of biotechnology? Um, again, um, this one is part of what Malaysia is doing. You, we produce a lot of rubber and oil palm, okay? So, how is these two uh, big plants related to biotechnology? Well, because we um, do have research in uh, rubber making, in, in oil palm, producing uh, a different variety of oil palm to make sure that the palm uh, more oils and stuff like that okay so those are uh, those technology involve the use of uh, biology you play around with genetics 
um, to produce a plant or a tree that can produce a material that um, that you want. Okay, so algae, uh, as I mentioned, algae, the use of algae in uh, producing biofuel, for example, that's another example, biofuel. So uh, it's basically ethanol, ethanol containing fuel. It's also produced using uh, biotechnology. Okay, and of course, two are, are nothing without genetic manipulation. So these are the most important thing. You manipulate the genetics, you can produce a, a material. You manipulate genetics, you can produce um, whatever you want, uh, basically, as long as you know what you're doing. Okay, so um, genetics, of course, genetics is the um, our core, uh, the core information for any organism. So everybody have a genetics, otherwise you are not living. Even viruses that are non-living also have a genetics. Um, and why is genetic is part of a critical um, information? All the enzymes that are being used in, uh, for example, replicating genetics, uh, your DNA, or producing uh, from a DNA into uh, mRNAs. So it involves the use of enzymes. Okay, and these enzymes are part of a genetic. Okay, I'll just put it under genetics too because the enzyme you know plays around with genetics and by doing this it also falls under um, another example is qt pcr okay uh, pcr originally it was discovered from um, how bacteria reproduce itself or, or replicate its genetics okay so this is one example and there are a lot more examples that you know, you can actually probably think of as well but I'm not just going to go through each and every example. We'll just leave it as this and continue on on biotechnological diversity. So generally, biotechnology can be divided into three categories. The first one is cellular, one second one is genetic, and the third one is uh, enzymatic technology. So um, cellular technology plays around, for example, in terms of fermentation or cell culture. Um, and you will use this in a bioreactor or cell processing um, in vivo, okay? And genetic technology involves genetic manipulation. As I mentioned, either you introduce a new gene, you play around um, with the gene itself, or you play around with uh, the entity that comes from the gene. Uh, as um, QTPCR, for example, that's a very good example in gene um, genetic manipulation. And of course, there are um, other... Um, examples um, that I'm not gonna bother to cover because it's more on biology, not uh, chemistry. Okay, but in this case, for example, genetic manipulation is something that you can play around um, to produce um, a chemical reaction. Okay, for example, uh, P450 is an enzyme that is being used or, or widely researched uh, for its oxidation property. Okay, so um, if you are interested, you can just go and, and find, uh, look for, just simply Google P450 chemistry, then you can find a lot of examples. Okay, and of course, you can have uh, enzymatic technology whereby you are using it out of cell. Um, this one is uh, QT-PCR. PCR is the best example because you are actually using the enzyme outside of the cell instead of um, asking the enzyme to produce uh, or multiplies um, inside the cell, you're actually taking it out, purify it, and then you use it outside of the cell. Okay, so um, isolated extraction enzyme for biocatalytic reaction, okay, PCR, for example. We will look into it in, in a bit more detail in the next few weeks. So, in general, um, again, as I mentioned, biotechnology in, uh, highlights the process, not the products or not the um, um, materials that they are, they are using. So when we're talking about process, there's a flow, okay? And when it comes to flow, you need to think about how does it work? And this is where the lecture, um, the, the slide is talking about. So you have your substrate, you have your biotechnological processes of interest, okay? Then you can separate, um, you purify or separate, and then finally you get your products, okay? So these are what's important. Um, not really the uh, final product alone, okay? So, um, 
chemical plus biological, you can get a biochemical um, processes conducting in a bioreactor. So we'll look at a few examples on how you can actually utilize chemical, biological or biochemical processes um, to get your product. Okay. Um, so this is just an example of a bioreactor. That is how it looks like. Um, this is where you have your microorganisms. Um, microorganism. Okay, so this microorganism might have been uh, modified or genetically modi modified or manipulated um, for a specific purpose, or you might just use a very raw um, organism from the environment. Okay, and then from here, you have your cells. And cells are, oops, my internet is slowing down. It's not showing the picture. Okay, and from the cells, you can manipulate um, a few places um, to get your product. Okay, so just a little bit of biology. So the ones over here, okay, the one in, in pink or, or purple is what we call as the nucleus. Okay. The one in yellow is endoplasmic reticulum. The one in bluish, greenish is Golgi. And the ones, just the media over here, everywhere, is what we call as cytoplasm. Okay, so these are the only things about. I'm guessing that all of you guys do have biological background, so you know a bit more detail other than just these four. But why these four is important or are important is because a nucleus is where you can play around, you can modify the genetics. Um, in the plasmid reticulum is where the modified genetics being expressed and transmitted or translated into um, an enzyme. Okay, Golgi apparatus is where you might have a post-translational modification of that enzyme so that it will be functioning, functional. And cytoplasm is where all of this um, modification and, and processes uh, takes place. Okay, we will look at it in a bit more detail in, in the future as well. Okay, so this one is just a general overview. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, we have three categories, right? Uh, if you look at the past, how many slides? One, two, three. If you move back to slide number 17, okay, so the um, diversity... Yep, diversity of biotechnology, where you have a fermentation, genetic technology, and enzymatic technology. Okay, so these are an example. So when you are talking about fermentation, meaning that you have a substrate, you use an uh, organism, then you get a product. As simple as that, straight away. You might do a modification, you might not do any modification. But if you do a genetic technology, whereby you might manipulate the DNA or, or RNAs or whatever, um, or do an editing to get uh, uh, certain types of products, then um, this is where it falls in. So the boxes are kind of like a, a fan diagram um, telling you where are the technologies are located. And if you're talking about enzymatic technology, it's normally outside of an organism altogether. You don't use the organism at all. So you just take the content from the organism and then you put in your substrate uh, together with the product. So normally when you're talking about this, it's an enzyme. Okay, so that's why it becomes enzyme technology. And then from there, you get your product. Okay, so those are the three things. So in terms of fermentation, you don't talk about the enzyme uh, specifically per se, even though, of course, um, to get or to do any fermentation uh, processes, you do need to have the organism to be able to do the process and for the organism to be able to do that, the fermentation process, the organism must have an enzyme specific to the process that you are looking for. But um, this is just to kind of like give you an overview. What are the general differences between if you're talking about enzyme technology or someone is talking about enzyme technology, normally they are not talking about using cells at all, just using a pure enzyme. Okay. All right, so we have five more minutes. Uh, biotechnology and chemistry, how they are 
interrelated and how you can actually use it. Okay, so chemistry is the act of cooking science. Uh, biotechnology is a process utilizing biotechnological entity. So if you have a picture like this where you separate all the sciences, you have physics, uh, biology and chemistry, biotechnology falls more towards the biological side. Okay, but there are certain bits that, that are overlapping with chemistry. And therefore, this overlapping section is where you use, okay, and that one, you might ask me, but doctor, that one is also overlapping between biology and chemistry. Uh, but that section over there might not be something related to industrial purposes. Okay, so you might, you can be able, you, you might be able to produce something uh, if you overlap biology and chemistry, but there is no particular use of it in the industry. So biotechnology, by definition, involves the application of um, the technology in the industry. So it must be something that is of benefit to um, our daily life, okay? All right. So biotechnology and chemistry uh, primarily applies for reactions in the sense that um, if you're talking about the three um, diversities, okay, cellular, genetic, and enzyme. So cellular and genetic technology are normally used in fermentation. Okay, so regardless of what you are doing, um, the process or the reaction that you, you consider are normally fermentation process. While for enzymatic technology, it's, simple, uh, it's simply an uh, enzyme reaction. So uh, the difference is uh, fermentation is where you have an organism, okay? You expose it to your substrate, you need to have a certain condition um, to which the organism needs for it to survive and do the process that you want. Whereas for enzymatic reaction, um, uh, say for example, for enzymatic reaction, uh, PCR, okay, we just take a PCR um, uh, as an example. PCR is a process by which the temperature is being regulated between 70 degrees to down to about 60 degrees. Uh, in a fluctuation manner, like that. So sometimes it goes up to 70, sometimes it goes down to 60. Uh, fermentation, for, for uh, on the other hand, requires a more constant temperature. Okay, because you are talking about cells. So cells doesn't really um, survive at 70 and then goes down to 60 and then straight away uh, 60 again, it, it, will, it will definitely die. So um, we are not talking about so that, that's when the processes are different, okay? So cellular and genetic are normally fermentation because you are using living organism or cells, while enzymatic technology are normally when you have extracted a specific cells or a specific enzyme, sorry, from the cells, and then you use it for your uh, purposes, okay? Um, for example, cellular technology is in vivo expression system. Um, an example of an expression system is where Perhaps we can just skip it because it's not really related to chemistry, okay? Um, genetic manipulation, of course, is, again, it doesn't really relate to chemistry per se, um, but this one is more on what we can use as a chemist, okay? Um, to express an enzyme, purify the enzyme, and then use the specific enzyme for a chemical reaction, for example, okay? Those two, I'll just skip. Um, other overlapping biological and chemistry. Advantages of biotechnology in chemistry. Okay, now now we go into a little bit on more detail. So first off, um, selectivity of the biomaterial. So um, as I mentioned, because the third option is using enzymes. So enzymes, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys know, is chemoselective. Some of that, of course. Some of them can be a regioselective, some of them are stereoselective, even some of them can be an enteoselective. Okay, so you need to recall back if you already forgotten about all these terminologies, just go back to your first first year lecture and recall what are the differences between chemoselective, regioselective, stereoselective, and enteoselective. Okay. And um, if you compare to a pure synthesis, it's greener. So as I mentioned, um, uh, just a simple example, if you are producing uh, ascorbic acid, if you do it synthetically compared to if you um, produce it in a biotechnological uh, platform, the biotechnological platform is greener. And that's part of um, 
the unit technician um, sustainable development goal whereby you want to we want to reduce the dependent on chemical processes to produce something that we normally use okay and i will just go to the last point before we end our lecture over here okay and the first one is you are using cell as a chemical factory okay so if you think about it um, because you can produce pretty much anything you can manipulate your cells um, you can pretty much have a limitless potential okay and you can probably even um, do a complex multi-step synthesis in a cell. And of course, we as a living being, we have been doing that for so long. Okay, we'll just uh, stop this lecture over here. And we will continue this lecture next week on Monday. Um, this one is already on number 22. So, yep. So if you have any issues, if you have any questions, um, you can just email me or... Just shoot the question on WhatsApp, okay? And have a good holiday tomorrow. Tomorrow is a public holiday, okay? See you guys. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. See you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.